the Gerson MC9 Disruptor. Let's check it out. Gershon is one of those companies that is very diverse, makes a number of different firearms. They're really expert at reverse engineering. Their Browning High Power clones are excellent. And then they have their 2311s, which are 2011 style handguns. Uh, also, they have a number of Beretta clones. Today, we're going to take a look at the MC9 Disruptor. And we've reviewed the original MC9. It's a polymer striker fire pistol, but it's got a lot of quality to it. But the big plus for the MC9 Disruptor is the price. We're coming in at under $400. Guys, there's a ton of different polymer striker fire pistols out there, but this brings it into a price that won't break the bank. And yet, Gerson has really good quality. Now, Gerson's based out of Turkey. They're a small arms contractor for a number of militaries. And guys, I've reviewed quite a few handguns from Gerson and the quality is just really top notch for the price you're getting. And a big thank you to Gerson for sending the MC9 Disruptor for this review. The Gerson MC9 Disruptor. Uh, this is a nine millimeter striker fired polymer frame pistol. There are a blue bazillion out on the market. Uh, a lot of times I'll see people that, you know, will say in the comments, oh, the striker fire market is saturated. And you know what? There's a lot of choices out there. Uh, but one thing about different companies, if they produce a 9mm striker fire pistol and it doesn't sell, guess what? They go out of business. So it's really important for a company to find its niche, what makes people attracted to it. The big thing about the Gerson MC9 Disruptor, is it's coming in at under $400, that's retail. So that is the big story here. Now there are some other things about this handgun uh, that really kind of bring it up to a more quality nine millimeter striker fire handgun. Here's the thing guys, capitalism works and it gives the consumer more choices. How can that be bad? So with that, there's a lot of cool things about this handgun. Now, one immediately is, is it has this black Cerakote camouflage finish. Uh, it's got the more of a satin finish and then it's got the matte. Uh, it's different, it has a different look to it, even on the frame. Uh, and then there's a green version that is the same. It has that unique camouflage kite pattern. And EAA, who imports these, says that that's a disruptor, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. It's kind of cool, too. And now, Gerson is made in Turkey, a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, these are imported, though, by EAA Corporation that's been around for a long time. And we really appreciate EAA Corporation for getting in touch with us and sending us the Gerson. So let's go ahead and make sure the gun's unloaded. We're gonna drop our 17 plus one magazine. You get one magazine. Uh, and then check the chamber and the gun's empty. Uh, now with the magazine, again, 17 rounds, it is a Metgar magazine, so it's gonna be good quality. But I really like to have at least a couple of magazines You know, when I buy the pistol. It is polymer framed. I mean, okay, it's polymer. And, you know, it has a very nice look to it. Uh, and really, it very much reminds me of another Turkish firearm, <laughs> the Canik. Uh, some similarities here. Uh, some of the slide configuration, some of the things about it. Uh, it's not exactly the same. There are some differences. Uh, in fact, the slide geometry is a little different. Uh, this looks more like an m and uh, The Canik is more squared off. And this is the Mete. The Canik makes excellent firearms. And reasonably priced uh, for the quality you're getting. And the same thing with the Gerson, also made in Turkey. 
uh, and we're seeing a lot of really quality small arms come out of Turkey. Uh, and here we have the MMP. Uh, and again, you know, even a little different here. Uh, but this is the 10 millimeter. Uh, I thought I'd grab my nine, but I'd grab my 10, but it's still the same. Uh, you have your slide cuts here that kind of shave some of the weight out, makes it a little thinner on top. And it's the same thing with the MC9 Disruptor. Uh, so you get a fairly thin top half on your slide, and then you come down with serrations here at the front, serrations here at the back. Grippy, very good. Uh, this, the small little serrations at the front, uh, they are abbreviated, but you know, they work. Uh, and that's one of the things that Smith & Wesson did. They got away from just the little small ones. They went up to the larger ones. And you know, it's just an evolution. Half by 28 threads on the barrel. And so we want to throw on a suppressor, makes it really nice. We're going to do that and check it out. Uh, we have our sights here at the top. Uh, this is integrated into the cover plate for your shield RMSC footprint. Uh, and then we have a front sight here that has a small screw with a dovetail, uh, similar to what CZ does. And I'm not sure what these sights would be compatible with, but obviously this is integrated. Uh, personally, I would rather it not be integrated uh, into the back. I like to have my sight, like to have a, you know, retain it in case my battery goes dead or something. But um, this is the way they made it. And it's a nice metal cover plate. We have a loaded chamber indicator right here, and then here at the back, you have your cocked striker indicator. That just means that the gun is cocked. We've checked it to make sure it was safe. When you hit it, it just disappears. And really, kind of considered a safety, even with the loaded chamber indicator. One thing I thought was kind of cool, though, is when the barrel and the chamber right here, the barrel comes up, and then here, it's actually cut down, so you can actually see the barrel, which is not typical. Is that a big deal? Well, it just looks cool. <laughs> now we have three slot Picatinny rail. You have a squared off trigger guard with an undercut. And then we have some texturing on the front. Uh, here on the grip, texturing panels here, uh, on the back, on the front. Uh, in fact, I mean, there's texturing and it's a little grippy, but you know, it's not super aggressive like maybe your Smith & Wesson, which to me is a little over aggressive, especially if I'm shooting a thousand rounds. Uh, but on typical range day, it's not a bad. I like the uh, grip ability. And this is in 10 millimeters, so I especially like it. But here, uh, this shot very well. I didn't notice any kind of weakness with the grip when I was shooting it. And that means that my grip stayed firm on the handgun. Uh, you do have an area right here to be able to rest your thumb uh, and to give you a little more. So, And then, of course, also to rest the inside pad of your hand when you're doing an, a high ride grip. But nice three dot sights. I mean, they look really good. In fact, I had another pistol out that same day that had lesser bright sights. They were just a little bit dim. And I really appreciated the brightness of these white sights. Um, as far as the bore axis, not bad, not bad. Some are really tall. This isn't super low, but it's not a bad bore axis. And you know, guys, we talk about bore axis and I talk about flat shooting and we talk about that, and, but the fact is, it is a thing. Flat shooting guns have a lot to do with the recoil system, but they also have to do with the bore alignment with your hand. Uh, so like I've explained, you know, if you bring your hand down here at the grip and you fired this pistol, it would be violently up in the air. So the higher up you get up to your slide and the less mass of your slide, uh, you know, the less felt recoil, or even more so, the less muzzle flip and muzzle rise. It'll just shoot flatter. It'll able to get you on your sights quicker. And that's just one of my personal preferences. Uh, you take the SIG P226, it's got a really high bore axis. And yet, the Navy SEALs use those for years. They can be very effective. So, if you don't care, there it is. But this, fairly low, not super low. Uh, on the bottom here, uh, we have a spacer on the magazine. Uh, and again, it's a 17 round magazine, again, made by Metgar. Metgar makes really great mags and they make magazines for a lot of the major gun companies, uh, that kind of a OEM mag. Uh, and you can buy Metgar mags separately. And your modern magazines are beveled, uh, and especially, you know, your double stack mags. So it gives you a little bit of a funnel to be able to go into your mag well. Uh, this, even though it's very slight, there is a little bit of a bevel here and on the other side, which is just gonna aid getting those magazines in really quickly. 
Uh, we do have grip availability to change this out if we want. It does have sort of a, a slight hump here and then it comes up into a nice groove uh, and a beaver tail. So uh, I reviewed the original MC9, it's been a couple of years ago. I was impressed with it. I mean, it's just a good quality gun and for the money, it's not bad. Uh, they're, they're just good shooting handguns. And this is really the style that a lot of people are drawn to. But they also, again, make their 2311s, which is a 2011. It's a 1911 with a double stack polymer frame type magazine. Those are really popular right now. And they came in at under $1,000, which is a big deal. That's fairly inexpensive for a 2011 style pistol. Uh, and then they're Browning High Powers. Uh, excellent. In fact, we had one of the lightweight compacts, and I really thought that gun would probably have a lot of muzzle flip to it. And it was shot really well. And I love the high power, and since Browning and FN have dropped the high power, it's nice to see some other companies come in. And, you know, at a more of a budget price, and yet we had great success with that little guy. Uh, and they've made some Beretta 92 clones, and one of my favorites is the Beretta 86 clone, which is a uh, tip-up barrel, 380 ACP, and uh, it goes with the original tip-up barrel Model 86, which those things have gone through the roof in price. So Gerson has been around for a while and they've made a lot of good quality firearms. Now the barrel is four and three quarters inch long. Um, and again, it is threaded, so it makes it excellent for a suppressor host. But if you don't want to do that, you can just leave it threaded and it just gives you a little extra length on the barrel. And we really appreciate Silencer Central for being a part of our channel. But fit and finish, very well done. I mean, this is the same finish you're gonna get from any premium quality uh, striker fire polymer pistol. It just has a very nice sheen to it, very nice look, All everything's really cut well. So uh, overall, I think it's just a, a very high quality polymer striker fire pistol, again, for under $400. And that's really the big deal about this. Now we're gonna check the trigger, and we have a trigger safety right here, so if you don't have a full pad on the trigger, uh, you have a little block, and you'll see that block move as soon as I depress that little safety. It does fit flush into the uh, trigger, which is important. There are some of these trigger safeties that don't quite fit flush, and you can feel it in your hand, and if you're shooting a lot or you have sensitive fingers, you know, it can uh, send some discomfort to your trigger finger. But here we have some take up, right to here. And once we get here, man, that's not bad. I mean, it has a little bit of stacking right before you get to it, but not a bad trigger. Let's go ahead and reset right there. Not a bad reset. We have a slide stop here and on the other side, which is ambidextrous. Uh, you can move the uh, magazine release to the other side. Uh, fairly simply, and we also have our takedown lever, which we just pull down, and we'll look at that when we break the pistol down. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. Five pounds, 6.7 ounces. Five pounds, 1.6 ounces. Glocks at five and a half pounds, uh, that's pretty much a good combat trigger. And we're gonna check the weight of the MC9 Disruptor. 28.97 ounces, so 29 ounces. Big thank you to Fioki for sponsoring our ammo. All made in the USA, one of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And also, as usual, we have our Lula loaders. We love them. The Maglula is awesome. Your son's one of those companies uh, out of Turkey, and they're making really good products, really for more of a reasonable price. And they're kind of stepping outside the box with a lot of their designs, including their high power, which I was very impressed with, especially the lightweight uh, compact. But this is their MC9, and this is called the Disruptor. It has a kind of a unique camo pattern to it. It's got a threaded barrel. We've got an optics plate. Nice three dot sights. 18 plus one in the magazine. Pretty smooth. Uh, honestly, it really reminds me of the Canik, uh, you know, the TP9 series. Good quality, I mean, it just looks like, it doesn't look like a budget handgun. It doesn't shoot like a budget handgun.
You've got the indicator in the back, your, your cock striker indicator, uh, so you know the gun is ready to fire. Uh, the magazine kind of hangs off the end. The texturing on here is, is aggressive enough. Uh, it feels really good in your hand. The thumb rest at the bottom. Uh, I can rest my hand uh, right there, actually near the takedown lever, which gives me a little bit of a slide stop. So overall, I've been impressed with your son and definitely the MC9 Disruptor is not disappointed. Very reliable. Looking forward to seeing what Gerson comes out with next because they come out with some pretty cool stuff. And we really appreciate Silencer Central for being a part of our channel. All right, we're going to break the pistol down. We're going to drop our magazine, check the chamber, and the gun is empty. Let's go ahead and bring back our slide and lock it in the slide lock. Bring down your lever, and then we're going to bring this forward after we pull the trigger to disengage the striker. And you want to point that in a safe direction. Here we have a metal guide rod. Uh, it is captive and it has the flat recoil spring. And a lot of companies have gone to that. It does make a difference in recoil management. Uh, I don't know if it's just um, the compression, the way it compresses, but it just definitely adds. HK kind of really started this and it's really taken off. Uh, before we pull our barrel out though, we got to take off the threads of our thread protector. And then we'll just pull out our barrel. Got a lot of lubrication on it. Uh, we took it to the range and shot it. Uh, it's been shot quite a bit. And uh, we're just going to get that off so we can get a closer look at some of the details. But nice barrel. Uh, we have our serial number on the barrel. But, you know, just your John Browning linkless design. And we have a high polished feed ramp. As far as the interior of the slide, very well finished. And guys, the finishing on modern pistols right now is excellent. You shouldn't see any tool marks, uh, and this is definitely showing just good quality. Uh, even your striker safety, your striker. And then with the grip, definitely a little different than you know some of the polymer striker fire pistols, but we have a little more slide rail right here. Sometimes they get really abbreviated. And then your locking block with your slide rail it looks nice, but overall it's a, a polymer striker fire pistol. And guys, that's all you need to do to field strip. We're going to reinsert our barrel. And we can put our thread protector on now or we can wait. But I go ahead and put it on so I don't lose it. Take our recoil spring and guide rod. We're going to put it in the front first. Push it and then compress it down against the barrel. Take your slide, bring it over your frame. Go ahead and put it in the slide lock. Disengage your slide stop and you're good to go or your takedown lever I should say test for function and it's working comes in a nice hard case blue box lockable open it up nice close foam padding is cut laser cut of course your gun fits right in there you do get two additional back straps one thing I really like is this little tool to change out your back straps uh, kind of looks like a Hershey's Kiss with a long nose or something. Um, and then we get, of course, you know, your locks, your brush, and owner's manual, all the normal stuff, and even a little cutout for a red dot if you put one on. As far as the price, $394 retail. And so at your local gun shop, you're going to be able to get it for less. And that really gets this down to a very reasonable price. And guys, I just want to give an overall view of this. Uh, let me just say that this is a nice striker fire, good quality polymer frame pistol. Uh, I think it could match any of the current offerings that are out there, you know, toe to toe. I mean, really the quality looks great. Um, so why would I want something like this? Well, definitely uh, the price makes it so easy to get into. And it's one of the things I love to see, again, with capitalism, we have a lot of options and sometimes price really makes a difference for a lot of people. And so this makes it a great gun for someone that's going to looking for a pistol for home defense, uh, you know, and they want to have something on a bedside gun. They don't want to break the bank, but they want something decent. And I think this makes an excellent option with 17 plus one. 
And a lot of times, somebody like that would not necessarily have an extra magazine anyway. But if they wanted to, they could add $40 and be able to get a magazine still under the $400 mark. But again, I think with the MC9 original, it was very popular. And so they've come out with this upgraded version and there's a market for that. And it's just great to see good quality striker fire pistols coming in for a reasonable price. With the original MC9, they did have a compact. So we may be seeing a compact model in the future. Now I want to give a big thank you to EAA Corporation because they're the ones that sent this and they've been in business for a long time down in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Uh, and they've imported a lot of different firearms and the Gerson line is really one of their most popular and mainly because they're so well made and yet the price is right. So the Gerson MC9 Disruptor, uh, the disruptive camouflage pattern or the threaded barrel, the optics ready. But the big story for this is the price, coming in at less than $400. And yet, it has quality that matches guns much more expensive. So check out the MC9 Disruptor from Gerson. It's an excellent handgun, and we really do appreciate Gerson for sending the MC9 Disruptor for this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Gerson's one of those companies that kind of surprises me. Uh, no. They make a number of different style handguns. No, go, go. Not now. No kitty cat time. Trigger pull weight with our Lyman Trigger Gates from Brownells? Nope.